Hi, I'm Alex and this is Alex Sonics Music, Stories and Passion. And today we're going to be talking about the harmonic series, or rather, this video will see me enchant a musical note. So, for this purpose, I brought my cello. <laughs> And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to be a little sorcerer and I'm going to enchant this very note. So I'm going to play it and then I'm going to let my sorcery work. And in the end, this initial note will be changed. So listen to this. Nothing too fancy, it's just an open D string on the cello. All right. magic. So what should have happened, now we can explain, is that all of these wonderful notes are actually part of the main note. And they're kind of hidden away, so we do perceive the D the strongest, but all of these others, cheeky little buggers, are hidden, you know, they're hiding away there. And they're only coming to, to the fore, you know, with a bit of magic. <laughs> okay, so um, now we can actually have a look together at the, at the harmonic series, see what it looks like on paper. So um, let's look at this. This is the harmonic series of a C, so it's different from what I just played. But you can um, transpose this to any note you want to start with. And it's about the relationships. And you can see, just without going into details, that from the bottom up, you start with very big strides, as it were, and then you're taking smaller steps. So we're starting with an octave, then a fifth, and then a fourth, and so on. So we have an octave, fifth, fourth, to make up two octaves. And then it becomes smaller and smaller. And you see these numbers here? I'm going to tell you later what they are about. So let's go back to the cello. Now, what's good about the cello in this context is I can actually show you something, how, why this is. You know, why is the first overtone an octave? So look at this. I'm playing the note. And you can see the string vibrating. 
I can actually feel it because I'm sitting here. <laughs> I can also hear it, of course. But look at this, it's about the visual experience. And it's even stronger with this one. Okay. Now this is a normal note and all of the string resonates. When I do this, Whenever I touch the string lightly, something magical happens. In this case, what's changing physically is that not the whole string is reverberating, is vibrating, but just this part and this part. So one half of the cello, from bridge to where I touch the string lightly, I'm only touching it, I'm not pushing it down to the nut up here. And this part is dead. It's not vibrating. And that splits the note in two. So we have an even fraction of one half, and that's the octave higher. And as we go higher and higher, you know, further away, we, uh, we divide the string in, you know, different sorts of fractures. And we can do it in both directions. I can go from here, but also because it's the same kind of diff distance to one end, so it's the same fraction. And um, that way I can play these ghostly, ghastly notes. Or even fairy tale like notes. Okay, so how can you use this um, as a composer? Of course you can use these in isolation, the harmonics, for an effect, but um, how you can apply this knowledge is to get your voicings to be clean, to clean up your low chords, basically. You see, if you have a very low note, and then you want um, to have the major third, just the next step up, so the major third that's in the same range, in the same octave, that's going to clutter up your sound. And the reason now is simple, because in, let's, let's take a low C. All these notes are hidden away <laughs> in this low C, like the third, the fifth, the octave, and many, many more. And if I add um, another low note with all these notes hidden away in it, it's going to clutter up the sound. So it's much better if I take the third a little higher, you know, like two octaves higher, because then I don't get all these low notes in there. This is very rumbly, and now imagine 
12 cellos doing this and 10 basses and you get the idea of what the sound is going to be like. <laughs> so there's one thing that I would like to point out and that's one of the overtones is I think a, a very special one. Okay, and that's the fifth overtone. It's a major third. So let's play this. Now this is a natural sounding major, major third. And it's different to the temperate uh, major third that we are used to when we listen when we listen to the piano. And how can we benefit from that? Well, it's mostly that when I play this D, the major third, the F sharp that I just played up here, is part of the note. So if you have a D and then you play an F sharp. And there's this one instance where the two, two notes blend into each other. They become one, magically. kind of sits on the F sharp up here. You know, they kind of become one. And that's a wonderful effect that you can't get with temperate tunings. So brass players can do this, string players can do this, woodwind players to a degree, I would say. Okay, well, I'm super chuffed that you made it to the end of the video, that you followed along. Um, thank you for watching. If you like the content, please feel free to subscribe. There's no, you don't need to, you know, but I'd be super chuffed to see you in the next video. Also, do check out my very own music, which is based on the Silmarillion. So if you're a Tolkien fan, um, I'm writing orchestral music for that making use of, of course, the cello, lots of cello solos in there. So yeah, check it out here or there, I don't know. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, bye.